Forgettable Bean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Hensel Co-op. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Edible Bean School. I am in Huron County today catching up with Megan Scott from Hensel Co-op. Megan, how's it going? Going pretty good, Bern. I'm, you know, I'm dry right now, but hey, this is a pretty wet field. Um, Hurricane Burl has just blown through Ontario here. Um, uh, water, water, water. And I think that's been the story of this year. Um, Megan, you know, what do you make of this year, especially as we get into managing disease? Yeah, that's right. So thanks, Bern. Um, this year, we've definitely had a wet season. We fought for every dry day that we've gotten, and we are worried about disease coming through as we're getting closer to that uh, fungicide timing in dry beans. Yeah, so we got probably, we're getting near, but we've got some time, and it's time to talk strategy. When you're talking to growers about white mold, what are you telling them about you know, how to assess their field? So I'm asking growers, get out there when your beans start flowering, take a look at your field, see what's going on. So I want to know, do you have a history of white mold in your field? Is your canopy kind of filled up? And do you have wet soil? Like, do you notice that when you go out there and walk that the fields are still damp, you know, mid morning, late morning? Does it look like it's sticking in there? Yeah. So once we've done that assessment and we probably, we see, you know, some, some danger or, you know, some challenges ahead, what about application? What should we apply, Megan? Yeah, so there's a lot of great products on the market, Burn, that you could choose from. So make sure you're looking at your modes of action. Make sure you've got something in there that's effective against white mold. And, you know, some of the new products, we've got products that are good on leaf disease and white mold at the same time. So you kind of get both with one shot. So mm -hmm. that's a great thing about some of our new products. What about a strategy from a one pass and a two pass? Right. So again, going back to your history of your field, you know, have you seen white mold in the past? Is this wet weather pattern continuing? And if the answer is yes, then really you should be considering a second pass. And in terms of that window, we really want to be cognizant of what's going on in the field. So if you put it on your first pass, you know, be looking seven days later. If you still got those same conditions, you should be tightening up that window and reapplying your second pass seven to 10 days later or you know, extend it as much as 14 days, but really pay attention to the weather and when you have an opportunity to get that pass mm. on the field. So we're looking for those pin beans, right? That's right, that's right. So when it is time to get out to the field, go out, take a look. You should see some flowers probably on the bottom of the canopy, top of the canopy, and as those first flowers start to drop off, you're gonna have those pin beans behind it. And that's when you wanna get in there and put your white mold fungicide on. Megan, let's talk application now. Um, you know, when we're putting on our fungicide, um, how important is water and getting down through that canopy? Yeah, so water volume is really critical when you're putting on fungicides. So you need those droplets to hit the plant in order to protect it. And if you've got big canopies, you want to get as much water on as you can to get those droplets into the canopy. So minimum 20 gallons. 25 gallons is going to do a much better job if you have the ability to do it. And you could also consider adding something to the tank, like a drift deposition agent. That's going to keep those droplets getting down into the canopy where they belong and protecting that plant. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about that second pass. If we decide to go, um, do we need to do the whole field or, or can we think strategically? Right, so that is an option. We're seeing more and more growers do that all the time. White mold is something that you might only see in certain areas of the field. And chances are, if you've got previous history, you know where those spots are. So you do have different ways you could approach that. You could get a script done up in advance that turns your sprayer on and off in those more lush areas that you know you're going to have white mold development. Um, or you could be as simple as just go in there with your own sprayer and you turn it on and off in those spots that you know that you're going to get white mold and you're only putting that second pass on where you know it's going to be a problem. Hey, let's talk uh, insects. Let's shift over there. I mean, we're, we're going out with a fungicide. Um, we may have some insect issues here as well. How do we put those two strategies together? Right, so no different than when you're going out to scout for your fungicide timing. Take a look and see if you see any bugs. Um, the most important thing is we have some major quality concerns when it comes to insects. So we have insects that can bite those beans, sting those pods and create kind of pick in your, your sample, which is the last, last thing you want to see. So if you're going out there, take a look, see if you're seeing things like tarnished plant bug, uh, western bean cutworm, that can be a little bit tougher to see in the field, but 
understanding kind of where peak flight is and if you're kind of right after peak flight and you're applying a fungicide that could be a time where you need to be applying an insecticide as well so really kind of have an understanding of of the where where the western bean cutworm is in, in the province and whether or not you should be adding an insecticide to, to keep those beans protected. Yeah. Hey, final question for you, and that this is a really nice bean field. Uh, you know, one of the probably the more advanced fields, and, and we're probably getting near to that stage where we got to think and sort of do some inspection in this field. Um, growers have got some time. What should they be doing? Need to be on your toes this time of year. That's right. So get out, start scouting now, see what your fields look like now, kind of evaluate how close are you getting to those canopies closing in, what kind of staging are you at, do you have some open flowers, and just try to make a plan ahead of any more rains when you can get in there and start spraying. Awesome. Um, Megan, great to have you back on the Edible Bean School. Thanks uh, for having me. We'll see you down the road. All right. Thanks, Bern.